Hey guys, this is Dirk Dallas here with Adorama TV, and today I'm gonna do a big walkthrough of the DJI Go app. Now, what is this app? Well, basically, it lets you connect a smartphone or a tablet to your drone so that you can get so much more out of your flying experience. Now, if you already know how to use the app a little bit, I guarantee you're gonna learn something today. And if you don't know anything about the app, you will for sure learn because I'm gonna walk you through every function and every button. Now, if you're interested, Let's get started. All right, so let's open up the DJI Go app. Now this is the first screen I see just because I've already connected my drone to the controller, but you will likely see a welcome screen first. But let's just walk through each of these settings. So at the very top, you're gonna see where there's that big yellow bar. I'm gonna click on that. And this menu gives us the overall status of our drone. And the first thing I see is that there is an upgrade that is required, but I will worry about that later. Next, I do see the calibrate compass option. So if I click on that, it would take me through the necessary steps. I only do this when I fly at a new location that is far from where I live. And then next, I wanna show you the remote control mode. I'm in mode two, and this just means that the left stick will control the throttle and the yaw, and the right stick will control the tilt and the movement. This is the most popular controller configuration outside of Asia and this is how I learned how to fly a drone so I'm just gonna leave it on that setting and then if you wanted to way at the bottom you could format your card but I uh, will show you how another way to do that in just a bit and it looks like now I have enough uh, satellites connected uh, that I'm getting the ready to go I actually have my drone inside those so I will not be taking off I'm gonna click on the very top where it says GPS and this takes me to the main controller settings. Now I have two options for setting my home point. The first is this option with the little arrow and what this does is this will set the home point to where the drone is right now. The next option is the little guy and that would set the home point to wherever I am with the controller. Now that would be beneficial if you are in a boat or you're moving in a car because obviously the home point would be changing. Now next I have the multiple flight modes and I leave this checked because I do switch between P mode, S mode and A mode. P mode is positioning mode and that means all the sensors are enabled which is going to result in a more stable flight because the drone is connected to GPS satellites which means that when you let go of the sticks it will hover in place. Below that is the sport mode and that unleashes the full potential of the drone allowing you to go full speed but it does disable the obstacle avoidance sensors. Below that is attitude mode, and this will disable all sensors, including the GPS connection, which means that your drone will move based on wind or air currents. So be mindful of those settings. Next, we have the return to home, and I have mine set to 60 meters, and this is about 200 feet, because in my area, I don't wanna get anywhere near a tree or a building. So if for some reason my drone does become disconnected with the remote control, my drone will fly up 60 meters, 200 feet, and then fly back. And right when it gets to the home point, it will then start to descend and land. Below that, you have the beginner mode. And what this does is this will disable a bunch of the settings that you do see. And this is a great setting if you're new and you haven't had much experience flying it will limit how high you can go and how far you can go with the drone. Right below that, we do have the set max flight altitude. I have mine at 120, which is just about 400 feet. If you try to change this to something higher, here in the US, you will get the notification that the FAA says you can only go 400 feet. So I'm just gonna leave that. You can enable the max distance so that you can change that but I recommend that you don't change this to something too far because you should be keeping it line of sight according to the rules here in the US. And then next is the advanced settings. And this takes me into my gain and expo tuning settings. So the first one at the top is the EXP. And this is basically the exponential curve, which allows you to control how the controls ease into certain positions. So if I move this hairpin that's right here in the center, of this first chart, I can change the amount of ease that my throttle will experience. And you can also change the ease on the rudder and the forward and right movement. Uh, same over there in the sport mode. I will do a separate tutorial on that, so stay tuned. 
Next, we have the sensitivity, and I don't really do any tweaks to this, but if for some reason you don't like how it's breaking, for instance, you could go in and change the sensitivity of the breaking. Below that, we then have the gain, and again, I don't really change anything in here. This is definitely for advanced flyers. Uh, people that are used to building their own drones are familiar with these settings, so this is where you can go in and tweak those. Then next, we have the sensors. And I have green, which means everything looks good on the IMU. The IMU basically takes a whole bunch of things together to make the drone stay in its current position. So if for some reason you are having a weird issue with the flying or signal issues or compass issues, go through and do the calibrate IMU process and that could help you out. Next over is my compass. Again, this is green, excellent. If I wanted to, I could calibrate the compass in this menu as well, but I will hit cancel. And then below this, we have the remote controller signal loss. I have mine set to return to home so that if for some reason my drone does get disconnected with the remote, it will fly up and then return back to home. But you could have it land or you could have it just hover until you figure out what is going on. I'm going to put mine back to return to home. Next, we have the smart return to home. I have that enabled. If I exit out of this, at the very top, right below the HD bars, you'll see a green bar that runs from right to left. The less battery I have, the shorter this bar gets. So it will let me know if I have an issue with maybe getting back my drone in time before the battery runs out, and it will try to engage and have that come back all on its own. So I think it's a handy feature. And then we can turn on the front LEDs or turn them off. This would be helpful if you're flying in low light and that red light is getting into the frame. All right, so next we're gonna go to the visual navigation. And this is where we have various settings for like the obstacle avoidance technology because we have all types of sensors. So if you want to have that engaged so you don't hit anything based on what the sensors are detecting, you wanna enable that. Um, below that we have the enable vision positioning. This really helps out when like the GPS signals are weak or if you're flying in, indoors, it will help maintain position. Next, if you use tap to fly and you wanna have obstacle avoidance on, you can leave that switched on. Below that we have the active track and you can enable backward flying. I highly recommend you're careful with this decision just so that if you are flying at a distance that isn't too high, and you could hit a tree or a building, obviously that would be bad news because the camera is not pointed backwards and you don't probably have a sensor unless you have the new Phantom Pro. So just be mindful as you use that feature. And then next below that is the enable obstacle avoidance and this will help you avoid obstacles. So if you wanna enable that if you have uh, the sensors engaged. Uh, below that we have the vision sensors and mine are all reading as normal. So that's great news. I don't need to do anything there. Next, let's go to the remote control icon. This is where I can adjust the gimbal wheel speed. So I have mine currently set to fast. If you want, you could change the speed of this to get different effects. Um, below that, we have the remote controller calibration. If for some reason your controller seems to be acting weird, you might wanna roll through this uh, calibration, but your drone does need to be off. And next below that we have the stick mode and I already walked you through that. I leave mine on mode two. And then one of my favorite features is the button customization. So below the controller you have the C2 and the C1 button. For the C1 button, I've made this shortcut go straight to the camera forward or the camera down. And this is awesome because if I want to quickly get into position with my camera, I can do that right away. For C2, I have mine set to the advanced camera settings. And so if I hit the C2 button, it will pop up my camera settings, which are super handy. So have that set up however you want. And then if for some reason you need to relink your remote controller or you buy a new one, you can do that with that last option down there at the bottom. Next, let's go to HD. This is the image transmission settings. And I usually have mine just on auto, but one of the things that you wanna just keep in mind is if you are having issues with the signal, you could try changing the channel mode and you could try changing the transmission quality down here. Just note that the higher the megabytes per second, the lower the range on the live feed. All right, so next let's hit the battery icon and this will give us an overall status of the battery. 
So if you see green, that's good. Over on the right hand side, we see temperature. Below that, we see the remaining power measured in milliamp hours. We see the total capacity of the battery, and then we see the number of times I've charged this battery. I have my critically low battery warning set to the default, which is 10%, and I have the low battery warning set to 30%, that's default as well. And what this does is once you get to 30% remaining on your battery, it will give you a warning like, hey, you only have 30% left, start thinking about coming home. Once you get to 10%, you better be close to home. Uh, that's really writing it really close. Uh, so these two warnings are really important. I would leave them at least at the default settings. And then flight time shows you how long you have flown with the battery. If I go into my advanced settings, I can see the voltage on my main screen, which will be on the top right hand corner. And then below that we have the time to discharge. These batteries are smart, so I have mine set to three days. And what that means is after three days, it will start to discharge the battery and help improve the life of the battery. And then after that, you can go to history and you can see the history of this battery and all the charging and self -char discharging that's taking place. Let's next go to the gimbal settings. Now this is a really cool feature. There's three configurations that you can have for your gimbal. On configuration one, I have my gimbal tilt exponential set to 100, which means that it will move really fast. And I have my gimbal tilt smooth track set to zero, which means that there will be no ease. We'll go over to configuration two, and you can see that my gimbal tilt exponential is set to 50, and my gimbal tilt smooth track is set to 20. This is just a much slower movement of the gimbal, and there's an ease on that. And then configuration three, I have that set up just a little bit differently. So I highly recommend you go through and you play with these settings. If you want, you can enable the upwards gimbal tilt limit. And that means that you can tilt up high, but you will see the props. So I just leave that off because I don't want to see the props in my shot. Next, we can go to center camera. And this basically will just snap the camera down and it will snap the camera horizontal. So I actually have this set up as my custom button, which I showed you earlier, and it does the same thing. And then next we have the adjust gimbal roll, and this is really handy if you want to change the way the gimbal is oriented, if for whatever reason you need to correct this in the air. And if you really have problems and your drone is on the ground, you can go through the gimbal auto calibration and start that off. Just make sure you're on a level surface. Okay, and then this last function with the three dots will take us into the general settings. And this is where you can choose if you want your measurements to be um, in the imperial system or the metric. Here in the States, we use imperial, so I'll leave it to that. Enable hardware decoding. Now this is a great feature if you have serious lag issues or freezing problems with the live feed. I would turn this on. And what this basically does is it helps with the processing power that is required to decode the live feed. So if you're using an older or a slow smart device, you should try turning this on because it can help reduce the overall heating of that device since it's not going to have to work as hard to decode the live feed that's coming in from the drone. Next you can go into the live broadcast settings if you want to broadcast through Facebook or YouTube and set that up there. And then we can show our flight route on the map. And this next setting is for China. And then this next setting is the cache map in the background, which is a really cool feature. If you don't have a device that's connected to the internet, you can turn on your Wi-Fi at home, locate that specific spot that you're gonna be flying in, let it download in the background. And then once you get to that location, even if you don't have an internet connection, you can see the details of the map. So super cool. Here you can clear the flight route and then below that is the geo system and what this does is give you flight regulations and restrictions in the area that you are flying so that's handy to keep on. And then below that we have the video cache so if you are shooting and you want low res proxies to show up on your smart device you can turn this on and here you set the limit for how big that cache will actually get, mine set at 2 gigs. And then below that is to clear the cache automatically because obviously you don't want all these low res files hogging up all the space on your smart device. And then right below that you can actually manually clear out that cache if you want to get rid of the low res videos and the low res 
photos that get stored on the device. Below that is the flight log, so you could see where you have been flying, um, and you can clear it with the clear option right there. And then you can go into the device name if you want to name your device. And then below that is the about page, which goes into the serial numbers for your devices and the software versions. So real quick, let's just now go to the main menu. And as a little shortcut, if you want to click on any of the icons on the top, it will take you to their menu. So if I click on the remote control, it will take me to the remote controller settings. If I click on the battery, it will take me to the battery settings menu. So that's a quick little shortcut for you without having to dive deep into the menu. Now if we look on the right hand side of the screen and I move my gimbal wheel, you'll see that there is a little circle that's moving up and down that line. That's just letting you know which way your gimbal is facing, out or down. Now right next to that we have the record button. So if I hit record, it will start recording. And then when I'm ready to stop, I can hit stop on the screen. I also have the button on the bottom left hand side of the controller that does the same thing. Right above that I can switch to photo mode and then now that record button is a shutter so I can take a picture by just clicking on the screen and I'm going to switch back to the camera mode. And then right below that uh, two buttons we have the play button and I can swipe to the left and see some of the things that I shot earlier today and I can view those. I can then push the button on the bottom left hand side and I can enter into the grid view and I can hit back and go back to my main menu. If I hit play, I also have the option on the bottom right hand side to delete anything that I'm actually previewing. Now let's enter into the camera settings menu. If I click the button that is directly below the record button, I now get my camera settings. And this is where I can go to auto or go to manual. Um, I can adjust my ISO and the ISO is the setting that adjusts the camera sensitivity to light. I can adjust the shutter speed and shutter speed basically controls the amount of time that your camera's shutter is open. And then below that is my EV setting, which is the exposure compensation value, which is all based off of the auto mode. So right now I'm negative 2.0 values below what auto suggests I shoot at. Okay, let's go up to the top of this little quick menu and I have the camera icon. If I'm in the video mode, I can go into all the different sizes and frame rates of my video settings video format. I have mine set to MOV, but you can put yours into the MP4 mode if you would like. Uh, I am based in the US, so I have mine set to NTSC, but if you needed to, there's PAL there below. Uh, this is where you access your white balance. Next is the style. So this is how you can really get to fine tune how your image is captured by affecting the sharpness and contrast, etc. And then right below that we have color options. So if you want to shoot in black and white or a really vivid, intense, saturated image, you could do that here. I personally just like to shoot my photos flat and then edit them in post. And then if I switch over to the photo mode, you can see that these settings now change for the still mode. So photo, I can go into HDR, multiple, auto bracketing, and then my time shot settings. I'm going to go back and um, show you how I can adjust my image size from 4.3 to 16 by 9, my image format from RAW to JPEG to JPEG plus RAW, and then white balance and all those other same video settings are those last three. I'm going to switch mine back to the film mode and then I'm going to now go over to my settings. I have this histogram that I can move around that helps me keep track of my light and dark values. Um, I have a front LED turn off option there. I have this overexposure option, which lets me know when my image is too bright and I might want to bring the exposure down. I leave this 3D noise reduction on to help me keep my images a little bit less noisy. This video caption setting is helpful if you want to have your flight data overlaid on top of your video if you are playing it on a supported device. Next up is the grid. Uh, lines. I really like using these, so I highly recommend turning those on to help you with framing. Below that is the anti-flicker. Mine's set to 50 hertz by default because I set my camera to shoot in the NTSC format, but if you shoot in the PAL format, you can set yours to 60. And then we have the file index, and right now if you shoot uh, with it set to reset, 
Every time you put in a new card and reformat it, your pictures will start shooting at one and then two, three, four, five. If you have it set to continuous, it will leave off at just the last number that you were shooting with on the last card. So if yesterday you shot 300 photos and then today you put in a new card and want to shoot some more, it'll start at 301. And then right below that we can reformat the SD card and then if we would like we could reset all the camera settings to their default settings. And then right up here on the top we have quick access to all the settings that we just covered. So my ISO is set to 100, the shutter speed is at 8000, my EV is at negative 2, my white balance is at auto, I'm shooting at 4K, 24 frames per second, the capacity of my card could record another 51 and a half minutes. And if I want, I can lock these settings by clicking on this little padlock and then it won't make any changes to the ISO, shutter, white balance, etc. So then over here on the left hand side with the arrow that's pointing up, we have the auto takeoff mode. So if you slide this all the way over to the right, your drone will take off automatically. And then right below that is the return to home feature. So if you want your drone to come back all on its own, that is where you find that option. And then below that is where you can find all the intelligent flight modes like active track, tap fly, point of interest, waypoints, follow me, home lock, and course lock. And then way at the bottom, you do have your beginners option right there. And I will uncheck that. Now, if we go all the way to the far right, at the very bottom, we have our map. And if I click into this map, it will go full screen. Now, I can navigate all around the map and check out my location and the surrounding area. But there are a couple of features at the very top that I want to walk through real quick. Like this first option, which is the warning space setting. This is where you get all the warnings for the various airspace and nearby heliports, etc. Places that you need to be mindful of before you go and enter that airspace with your drone. The next button over will zoom right to where I am currently located. Then the next one over orients you to north. And if you uncheck that, it will face... Uh, whichever way your controller is. So if I were to move my controller, the map will update uh, accordingly. So that is a pretty cool feature. And then the one right next to that gives me my standard map view. I could go into my satellite view or I can go into the hybrid view. I'm just gonna go back to my main screen and shrink that back down. Now at the very bottom we have our telemetry data. And this is basically the data that helps us know what's going on with our drone. So this first option over here on the left is our radar display, which shows us which way our drone is facing in relation to north. So you can see there's that little N icon. It's currently facing away from north. And this can be super helpful to know because if I know which way north is and I lose sight of my drone for whatever reason, I can fly it back in the direction that I am in. So super handy, super helpful. Um, right next to that is D for distance from the aircraft. So I'm just a few feet from my drone because it's in the other room. Right next to that is H, which is height based off of my takeoff point. And then below that on that last line, we have HS, which is the horizontal speed of my drone. Next to that is VS, which is the vertical speed, which is how fast or slow my aircraft is climbing or ascending. And then right next to that is the VPS, which lets me know the distance to the ground, which is all thanks to those little cameras and sonar sensors underneath the drone. And the final thing I'm going to do is click over here on the top left hand side where it says DJI and just show you that I have the equipment setting. So if I had multiple drones, I could swipe to the different drones that I do have. Next to that is the editor. If I want, I could bring a clip in and I could edit this. I could clip it down there and then save it to my smart device. I could enter into the photos and I could pick one of these photos and you see it's a low res proxy, but I could download the original if I wanted to. I could go into the edit mode and I could play with my brightness. I could play with my saturation. I could play with my contrast. I could crop it. I can put filters on it. So pretty cool and you can also share those right from your phone. Right next to that, I have my SkyPixel uh, feed so I can get inspired by all the crazy cool work that people are posting up on the SkyPixel website. 
And then right next to that, you have the profile. So you can create a new profile or you can sign in here. Also access the store and the form. I'm gonna go back to the equipment tab and show you the final thing for this tutorial. Up here on the right hand corner, we have where we get to the flight simulator, which is super cool. I highly recommend you check this out if you haven't played with this. This is how you really get comfortable with your settings. Um, this is how you can play with every setting that we just went through and see how they work. And then right next to the flight simulator are a bunch of tutorials that are a great help. So if you're interested in becoming more knowledgeable, definitely check these out. And then if you needed to access any of the manuals, you could do that with that very last option. All right, well, thanks for watching Adorama TV. I hope that was helpful to you. If you still have a question about a function or a button, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to help you out. I'm Dirk Dallas and I will see you guys next time.